Have you guys ever wondered what Toyota is best off-road? Well, today we're gonna go and answer that question because behind me are three Toyotas and I'm driving the one in the middle. Okay, it's a Lexus and it's 72,000, but it's the GX, which has become the off-road darling of the Lexus world. But Nathan, what are you driving? I am driving the best of all Toyotas. That's an SUV, and that's because this is a 2021 Toyota 4Runner, and it's a TRD Pro, and it costs $52,000, but it is amazing, and it looks really cool too. Tommy, what are you driving? Yes, check it out, the Hipster 4Runner, our 2014 FJ Cruiser. We paid $33,000 for this one. It's six years old, but I think it's better than the other two, and in this video, we're gonna find out by taking them up, the Ironclads, our off-road trail. I'm interrupting this Toyota video for another Toyota video. If you're wondering how good these three are on-road, join me over at TFL Car today, where we're doing an on-road review. So we're gonna take them up the ironclads. That means Razor Rocks and of course, Truth or Dare. But Nathan, what order should we take them up? I think we should go by price. I love that. That means, Tommy, you got the cheapest, so you get to go first. Great, it is so cold. Yeah, but there's a problem. You still have 8.1 inches of ground clearance uh, in the back, so you need to be really careful. There's a bigger problem than that, and that is this is not my vehicle, and it costs almost $72,000. How many people are going to take their $72,000 vehicle off-road? The FJ Cruiser is decidedly old school. Not that the other two are modern marvels of engineering, but anyway, the FJ Cruiser has a solid rear axle. It's got a rear differential lock in this version. I also have an A-Track or Advanced Off-Road Traction Control, and I have a low range which you activate via a good old chunky lever. When it comes to tires, I've got the Cooper Discoverer AT tires, and they should be pretty good out here. Now on paper, the 4Runner and the FJ Cruiser are pretty much the same vehicle, however, the FJ Cruiser is better because it's just so much more fun. The exterior design is reminiscent of the FJ40. The interior is super cool with this color matched interior panel and it's got a shorter wheelbase. So in theory, it should be better up the steps. Let's see. All right, I'm coming up to the steps. Now I have the uh, FJ Cruiser in low range with A-Track with the off-road traction control engaged. I don't have multi-terrain select like you guys, but let's see what happens on the first of the steps. Come on, little FJ, climb. Man, it's so capable. You know, I am admittedly a pretty big Jeep fan, but this FJ Cruiser has really brought me into the Toyota world in a big way. It's just, it's so much fun. It's got so much character and it's so capable. Come on, all right, there goes the traction control, but that's okay, that's what it's there for. Alright, so on the outside, this is a TRD, so the 4Runner is already built for being a proper truck and it can kind of off-road. Then you go to TRD, well, so armor up front, underneath, locking rear diff. I'm going to show you all the buttons in a second, but it also has 17-inch wheels, which by the way look absolutely spectacular, and they're wrapped in Nitto Terra Grabber rubber. I think I said that right, yeah. So the point is, is that it's already got really aggressive rubber, and it is, it's really aggressive rubber. It has definitely a little bit more of um, a proper lift as opposed to say, oh, I don't know, an overpriced Lexus. And then on top of that, it has all the other components up, boom, here. There is the A-Track mode. So you activate this and basically think of it as cruise control for off-roading. And it works really, really well. And it kind of takes some of the fun out of it, which is why I don't use it. But what you basically can do is turn the dial and make the vehicle go a certain speed off-road. And it even tells you low, medium, and high, and you know, you're able to select it. So the vehicle on its own will accelerate up and over obstacles, which is great. And it's something that the Lexus can do. However, this is a proper 4x4 vehicle, so it has a proper transfer case, and it has a locking rear diff. Those are the two things I need the most. It's also able to select the different terrain. You're able to go through here and select that, and everything is 
fine. It's a great system. The only unknown element here is snow. Snow is an issue. The throttle can take care of snow. <laughs> Now I'm in what has become the darling of the overlanding world, of course, the Lexus GX. Think about it as a Land Cruiser for less. And the Land Cruiser, of course, is going away. So that means I've got all the off-road goodies that the other two vehicles have, but there's a problem. But let me talk about the goodies first. First of all, I've got crawl control. I have a high and a low range. And unlike the other two vehicles, I also have air suspension, which means I can jack this car up to give me more ground clearance but like I said there is a problem and that is really really terrible approach to departure angles for an off-roader and from the manufacturer all-season tires and both of those are really gonna limit this vehicle's ability off-road now I don't know if I can actually make it over the steps with the uh, low chinny uh, chin chin that this uh, Lexus has so Tony can you take a look and make sure I'm not gonna you know tear off my chin <laughs> All right, let's uh, walk on up here, Dad. How close am I getting? Mm -hmm. Currently about four feet. Am I gonna hit? I don't know yet. Keep going nice and slow, nice and slow. Stop, stop! Oh, no! Am I done already, Tommy? Yeah, you're stuck. I've got it in the high as well. There's nothing I can do. I mean. Am I gonna really tear the spoiler off? Alright, just go nice and slow, I'll tell ya. You. you got a little bit of room. Keep going. Uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty plasticky and crunchy. Okay, well, guys, uh, now there were two. And I don't want to call to and say that I tore off the chitty chin chin uh, because, well, I was being reckless. So, um, I think this actually is a real world demonstration of what ends up happening. Uh, when you take, you know, what is basically a luxury SUV up a very difficult trail. Oh, what a bummer. Okay, well, you can hop in with me in the FJ, Dad. So one cool kind of tidbit about all three of these vehicles, they are related in one way or another to the legendary Toyota Land Cruiser Prado. But underneath the hood, they have pretty much the same engine. <laughs> so the Toyota FJ Cruiser has a four liter V6 with 260 horsepower. The 4Runner has a four liter V6 with 270 horsepower. The Lexus, well, it's got a V8, but it only makes around 300 horsepower. So a little bit more powerful, but uh, you know, not, not exactly massive power numbers out of a 4.6. So these are the Razor Rocks. We've got this big ravine with a tree on the left and these jagged rocks that we have to climb up. Um, it's gonna be a good test of approach angle, departure angle, brake over angle, traction aids like diff locks, and uh, nice driver skill. <laughs> Let's see what happens to the FJ. Hopefully I don't damage this vehicle because it's still 33 grand, and FJ cruisers just don't depreciate here in Colorado. They're perpetually worth like at least 20 grand always, it seems like. So, let me go into Low range, we're gonna lock the rear diff this time. Not that I don't think A-Track could do this obstacle, but honestly, I just want that added control that the rear diff lock would provide. So, see how the articulation is on the FJ Cruiser? Probably gonna lift the front tire just a little bit, or a lot of it. Tommy's slipping a little bit. Tommy slipping a lot more. Okay, the traction control system just kicked in there. I'm gonna have to take this super easy. Left foot braking it. I don't wanna skewer this thing on the tree. Good God Almighty! What in the hell? You almost got that rear wheel on, Tommy. There you go, you got it, now you got it. Now that locking dip can work. This is a serious obstacle, especially when there's a little bit of snow on the ground. Let's see how the underbody protection is. Just gonna go nice and easy. Super easy. Gee 
whiz. Okay, so it's a combination of the A-Track system and the rear diff lock meant I was able to get up that, but that was um, much harder than I was expecting. That snow makes that um, obstacle just so gnarly. Makes my day. All right, dare I say it, Nathan? Uh, the Forerunner uh, did better than the FJ. No, I wouldn't dare to say that. <laughs> no way. Not to disagree, but by looking at it, I think it did better. Normally, short wheelbase pays off, but I think going over something like that, I straddled it a little bit better. You know, I'm glad I didn't bring the Lexus up here. Uh, I just hate breaking stuff. Well, I know why you didn't give it to me because you know I would have broken it. <laughs> you know, that Forerunner kind of suits your personality, dude. This thing's kind of a beast, you know? It really, really is. This is, until the Bronco comes out, one of the best vehicles in its class that has four doors. Ladies and gentlemen, in my best TV announcer voice, me truth or dare. Yep. They're two different paths. And in the summer, truth is a little bit easier than dare. But in the winter, truth gets icier, thus it makes it harder. So for the hill climb, I'm going to engage A-Track rear diff unlocked, because sometimes it makes you slide into stuff. Compared to the Foreigner, the FJ Cruiser is a little bit handicapped by its clamshell rear doors. It's also handicapped by its lack of visibility. It's kind of like driving as if a gnome were stuck in a mailbox. <laughs> you just got really squinty, narrow windows. It looks cool from the outside, but on the inside, uh, forward visibility and rearward visibility and sideways visibility is somewhat compromised. But that doesn't really matter because it just looks so cool. Well, actually, it does matter a lot, especially when you're uh, trying to maneuver in parking situations. All right, I'm going up the harder side. Let's see how the FJ Cruiser handles it. These Cooper Discoverer tires are doing really, really well, actually. Tons of grip. Yeah, there's no issue. This vehicle is such a beast. I just love this thing, and it's so well made. I mean, there's a reason they hold their values so well. I mean, yes, frame rust is a big issue, but apart from the frame rust, there's not much to go wrong with this thing. Hey, Nathan, that was really easy. Why don't you try the other side? Tommy made that look like cake. Okay, so I'm going to head right. Yeah, head on right, dude. Yeah, I don't recommend going off-road in snow for beginners. You really need to know your vehicle and understand how it slides, and you never know what's underneath the snow. There's so many variables. Go for it. You mean these little things on the left? They're adorable. These tires are pretty good, but they are losing traction as well. Tommy's been losing a lot of traction. All right, the FJ and the Foreigner made it look too easy, but they're pretty serious off-roaders. So boys, if it were your money, which would you get? Forerunner. Forerunner, no doubt. Forerunner. Now you gotta go FJ Cruiser. It looks cooler, it's shorter, it's more trendy. That's the one for me. Tommy has issues. Look, I love the Lexus, but for 72K, you could get both of these potentially, <laughs> especially if that's not a 2014. Uh, so I'll take anything right now that actually keeps me warm. Guys, thanks for watching and check out TFL Off Road for more news, views, and what, boys? Off road reviews? Real world and honest. Independent and honest reviews. We say it on every video, people.